Today, our mastering topic is going to be on journals, streamlining, um, creating journals to, to really make your analysis a little bit more efficient. I am using Jump 18, Jump Pro 18 today, um, our latest version, which was actually just um, released earlier this week. Um, however, I'm not going to be showing any pro features, um, but I may sneak in um, um, one or two new Jump 18 um, things that are related to, to journals. Um, so, jump journals. Um, what are they? What can they be used for? Um, so, today we're going to um, talk about how we can use them and share information both with people who um, do have jump and who don't have jump. Um, journals are essentially are a copy of a report output. Um, it's where you can save a copy of a report, um, perhaps from several different platforms in one container. In fact, what you see on your screen here is a jump journal. Um, journals can have many uses. Um, one, it, one use is to efficiently execute your jump workflow. Um, so again, you're, you're saving all of your jump output to a single file, and then you can add other things too. One thing that I want to you to keep in mind though throughout um, today um, is, a, is this question of what's the goal of saving um, your saving your analysis is it really to have static output or is it to have dynamic output and we're going to consider those two things as we talk about um, jump journals so um, what can you use a jump journal for gosh you can use it for a lot of different things um, you know, first, you can use it as a notepad. Um, I'm going to open up this first jump journal, um, which are um, real estate notes. Um, in uh, late 2022, um, I had a family member who was looking at buying a house in the Durham, North Carolina area. So I went to um, Redfin. I pulled all the homes that had been sold in the past um, three months and created some graphs. Um, so here's a, a contour um, map uh, looking at that area of, of Durham of homes that were sold. Um, looking at the price um, of, of homes, just kind of see, you know, what, where are those areas where there are maybe more expensive homes, um, homes where um, maybe not quite as expensive. Um, so you can see I'm um, just really using this more as like um, notes, making some notes here with some of the graphical output. Um, have another uh, graph here, which is a, a bar chart, um, still related to that same um, analysis, looking at different property types. And notice how we can um, interact with these, um, with the journals here. I can double click and I can change this to um, bar chart here um, for this particular um, output. So you can see that a jump journal is just kind of this, this one file where you can um, you know, statically save output um, for presenting them. Um, in this case, you know, it's, um, it's going to be just some, some notes um, around my um, analysis that I did uh, related to those home sales in um, late 2022 in the Durham area. So you can use that as an, um, a notepad. I'm not going to save this. Um, but you can also use jump journals um, as workflow management, in, including creating these um, easy buttons to easily um, launch jump platforms. Um, so here's an example of a jump journal. Um, and this is from a colleague. Um, he had a series of, of sensors that were um, set up in his, in his house. Um, and so he has these script buttons here where he was pulling data in um, from those home sensors um, and uh, so doing some things and, and basically pushing it into a data table. Um, and then he was doing some data cleanup, um, looking at outliers and process screening. And then he was taking that data and joining it with some weather data um, and then doing some other output here, creating some graphs um, and et cetera, um, et cetera. So um, in this example, it truly was a workflow of kind of um, beginning to end of all of the analysis that um, he, was, he was doing. Now, the most common way that um, people use, and, and for me personally, um, of using a jump journal is creating a presentation um, that will include jump output reports, um, maybe imported slides, um, links to external to jump um, in this kind of outline format. Um, and so here's, here's a jump journal um, that I created um, and that we're actually gonna create today 
um, where it's essentially, you know, where it's statically um, I have these jump output files and I want to organize them for presenting. And this is almost in lieu of or perhaps in addition to a PowerPoint. Um, and so one of the things that I like to always share with jump users, so I was a jump user, you know, um, Gail and I were talking about the San Antonio um, Discovery Summit um, Americas that was, gosh, in 2013. Um, and I was a, a jump um, user for a long time, so for probably 17 years before I started working here. So one of the things I always like to share with jump users are my jump confessions. So one um, confession, jump confession that I have is that in those 17 years, I barely used jump journals. Um, and I'll tell you why in, in, a, in a few minutes. But, um, but yeah, so this, um, you know, journals are really an easy way now that I use them every day. They're really um, a great way to kind of um, take your output and have links and just organize them for presenting. I mean, your data table and projects are great, right? Um, but journals are just an alternative um, to that. So, um, so this is kind of the third way is just taking um, links, reports, and, and really conveying that information. Um, the data that I pulled for this journal is actually some fuel economy data. Um, I just bought a hybrid car um, and was interested in learning about fuel economy. Um, this, these are particular, the data uh, specific data that I pulled was um, from the EPA, and this was uh, 2023 data. Um, in fact, this is the website that I pulled it from. Um, and, um, and because I bought a 2023 car, um, I actually got this under the EPA Green Vehicle um, Guide. Um, I actually downloaded this um, power, um, PDF file and imported that PDF file um, into Jump. And I'm um, not going to talk about it today, but yes, you can import data um, from PDF files um, as well. So that's the data um, we're going to use today to create um, a journal. So once you have your um, reports um, in a journal, um, what can you do with them? You know, how do you share them? Um, so you can share um, jump journals or the content um, in jump journals, both with people who have jump, jump users and non-jump users. Well, how do you share those, um, those reports to non-jump users? Well, you can export um, the reports in journals to PDF, HTML, um, PowerPoint, um, et cetera. Okay, so we're gonna, um, we're gonna talk about, uh, we're gonna talk about that in, in just a bit. Before we do that, um, let's talk about the key um, components of a journal. Um, first, in a journal, um, you can have text, and you see that the text here on the screen. Um, you can have text with no bullets or, um, or text um, with bullets. And this is, for the most part, just free, free text. There's um, a little bit more organized text um, that we'll talk about. You can also um, have jump um, images. Um, you can grab jump images. Now, this happens to be a jump, um, a map that I created in jump. Um, this was actually not from that same fuel data file, but actually from another um, fuel, uh, actually energy consumption um, data that I grabbed. And this was from the year 2016. Um, it had it for the entire U.S. by county. So I pulled out just North Carolina. And this is um, a heat map of looking at um, on-road um, transportation, basically looking at gasoline consumption, gallons per capita. Um, we're in kind of the, the central um, area of North Carolina. Um, I'm one county over from um, where our headquarters um, is located here in, in Johnson County. So I can see that, you know, compared to some of the other um, counties, you know, maybe not quite using um, so much gasoline in, in 2016 as some of those other um, counties. But this happens to be a jump image, um, but other images can also uh, be imported into a jump journal. So not just images from, from jump reports. And the third thing, um, the third thing that, that you need to, to know in terms of being a component of a jump journal, and I like to, um, and, and these are buttons or links, um, and these buttons, uh, so you can have buttons here, and these buttons, um, you can have a, a bu button which is just a link um, to something here. I have a link um, to our jump um, homepage. 
um, we could have links um, or, or buttons to, um, to data tables or to PowerPoint files. Um, and you can see these, this is a um, HTML style um, hyperlink, um, which is more of a, a link. So just a name underline, and that, that again is taking me to the jump um, homepage. Um, so these buttons or links, you can really have, um, you can link up to URLs, um, you can link to documents on your computer. Those could be um, jump data tables, could be PowerPoints, could be images, could be Excel, um, or the, that button or link could be um, an embedded table or, or, or script. Um, and so essentially, what Jump is doing is writing scripts for us, which is absolutely my favorite thing to do. Even though I've used Jump for a really long time, um, script writing is, is not my favorite task. Um, so in order to create a journal, what are some keyboard um, shortcuts? And, and this is actually what I was alluding to earlier when I talked about my Jump confession um, about, about why I did not use journals. Um, and the reason I didn't use journals is because I didn't have the secret sauce. I didn't know the secret sauce. Um, and these keyboard um, shortcuts, um, two, two things mainly, um, which are gonna help you tremendously in creating um, journals. One is the arrow option, which you can, um, you can get to these tools too, by the way, if you go up to the um, menu option for tools and you can, um, you can select arrow. And then the second one is the selection toolbar, okay? Um, and I also have shortcuts to these up here at the top, my menu. Um, but another shortcut, a keyboard shortcut is to simply type um, A, um, here, and, and this works um, both on a Mac and a PC. So if I type A, I already have the, um, the arrow here. You see my mouse, that's the arrow. Or if I press S, it's going to um, move it to the selection. So I'm going back to A and then S, A and S. So the um, arrow and the selection, um, those shortcuts, that is really probably the um, you know, as I, again, as I said, kind of the secret sauce to creating journals. And that's what I missed for a really long time. And I think I was a bit intimidated by, um, by you know, those, those uh, by journals because I didn't know some of those shortcuts. So if you don't remember anything else, remember the arrow and the selection um, and, a, and a couple other tips and it should be really easy for you to create um, journals. Another um, shortcut that was um, put into Jump, I think in version 16, is this journal toolbar. Um, now you're not gonna see the journal toolbar all the time. Um, you're only gonna see it if your journal is unlocked. So if I right click here on my journal, um, you can see that it's locked. Um, I'm gonna press that to unlock it. And now I see the, um, the, the uh, journal toolbar. And so this toolbar is going to allow me as shortcuts to be able to insert things like outline, text, images, um, etc. Um, but if I lock my um, journal, um, I'm not going to be able to see that. And there are some reasons why we would want to lock our journal, because oftentimes if we have more than one journal open and we're sending things to, to a journal, um, then you know, we may not be sending it to the right one. So that's one reason why we want to lock it. So that's why I'm going to do that today because um, I want to have multiple um, journals open. What we're going to do now, um, we're going to actually going to create a journal from scratch.